Hello guys, welcome back to Money Tech Shack. Today we're going to be discussing whether or not the GTX 970 is worth it for you guys to buy it in late 2020 and early 2021. So let's get right into it. So as a reference card today we're going to be using the MSI Gaming 4G Edition GTX 970 with the 4 gigabytes of VRAM. No, it does not have 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Don't get tricked. It's actually a 3.5 gigabyte VRAM card. Uh, Nvidia likes to call it a uh, low performance memory for the 0.5 that is missing however i like to think of it as it's just not there because it's unusable but anyway with that bleak start let's get on with it so like i just said it's a 3.5 gigabyte vram card that's any card this is the only option you can get 3.5 gigabytes of vram uh, and yeah it's 3.5 gigabytes of vram are still usable in uh 2020 or late 2020 early 2021 it's still very usable however if you're going to be playing some very high intensity games like the new cyberpunk 2077 i struggle to run it on my gtx 1070 now my predictions we're going to try it today uh, my predictions are that i'm guessing you can hit the 60s on low settings but it will often drop to the 50s and 40s and i'm guessing for medium settings and that's kind of the highest i would go is it'll be in the 30s and high 20s most of the time and mid 20s in the city but those are my predictions i have played the game for a bit and considering the benchmarks i've been getting on my 1070 that's what i'm basing my predictions on but anyway let's start off with the looks shall we the gtx 970 that i'm using today the msi edition is uh it's a pretty good looking card i'd say especially for the time it was released the 970 was released back in 2014 and yeah this card has a nice black and red look to it it's got a light on top with the msi logo on it the msi dragon and these two fans in front uh, they seem to be decently sized so the cooling should be adequate as long as it's got the right airflow and it's in a decently cooled case now it's also got metal heat pipes coming from the inside to help with the cooling obviously the metal heat pipes uh help to disperse the heat if that's the right word and yeah it's definitely a helpful thing to have on most graphics cards these days so my biggest complaint with this card's looks i'd say is the lack of a backplate because i don't know it just feels incomplete i feel like there was a backplate on this one i'm not sure if there was because i bought it second hand but it just feels like there should be one there and it just the exposed little chipsets on it it just feels wrong in 2020 i don't know i don't like seeing the exposed chipsets and the exposed back in 2020 on a graphics card it's something it doesn't really work with most pcs aesthetics but yeah if you do have your pc closed off if you do not have a glass side panel then you're most likely going to be fine and even if you do it's not the worst it's just a little picky thing i have again it you know it's just a small flaw about it this card's got a six pin and an eight pin pci connectors so you can tell that it's not exactly the most efficient card on the market but i will say however i couldn't find the td exact tdp of this card but what i could find online however was that the minimum power supply you need is a 500 watt power supply but i'd say you could also go for the 450 uh 400 watts would be a kind of pushing it but as long as you have a decent 450 watt power supply i'd say you'd probably be fine this specific 970 also has one display port, one HDMI port, one DVI-D and one DVI-I. To be honest, I'm not very familiar with the DVI ports. I've never used them and probably will never use them because, well, I actually don't even know if my monitor has DVI-I or D. So yeah, as we all know, the GTX 970 has been quite controversial since launch because of its 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM scam fee. So Nvidia said they launched it with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. However, it only has 3.5 usable gigabytes of vram the rest they call it low performance i said it all in the start but i'm gonna go over it again they call it low performance vram and it's basically just unusable vram i don't know what it's for i'm not even bothered to check what it is actually for but it's basically a 3.5 gigabyte card in conclusion but that doesn't really hurt much performance because that 0.5 gigabytes of vram could help but also doesn't take too much away from it Obviously that kind of sucks, 
you know, going in buying a card that says it's a 4 gig card, but it's not actually. But uh, I did find out that I think people did get compensation. I think it was in around like $50, 50 euros, 50 pounds, wherever you are. Uh, I'm pretty sure they got like 50 euro compensation for the misleading marketing that Nvidia did. That is quite scummy for such a big company to be doing that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, we all know with big corporations, it's all about the money. But anyway, let's not drag that on for too long. And let me talk about my experience of uh, owning this card for a while so i was very happy with it uh, i don't think if you buy this card you'll be disappointed i think you'll be very happy with it from what i can tell it's got very close performance to the rx 470 the amd equivalent to it however the rx 470 does have four gigabytes of vram truly four gigabytes of vram and an eight gigabyte of vram equivalent so you know you can opt for that but what i will say is the reason to get this card a lot of the times is the RX 470 and 480, 570 and 580 are quite hard to find since all these YouTubers have been recommending it as the best budget card. People have just jumped to it and they've kind of been like robbed of the um, used market. It's quite hard to find them, especially where I live. So the 970 is a great alternative to go for. All right, so after talking a bit, my curiosity is getting to me. So let's pop this into my PC and get to benchmarking, shall we? So the PC I'm benchmarking this with has an i7 3930K. It's got six cores and 12 threads and it's slightly overclocked to four gigahertz it's working at a decent rate and it's paired with 16 gigabytes of ram clocked at 2133 megahertz in quad channel so the bandwidth there there should not be any bottlenecks for this card and yeah so let's cut to the b-roll All right, so I finished benchmarking the system and first game up was Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, my predictions were way off. Yeah, I did not um, see this coming really. So the average frame rate we got at low settings was 39 FPS. 1% uh, low, we got 31, and a 0.1% low of 28. This was very playable. I think it was way better than the console experience you'd get on the last gen consoles, or like the PS4 and the Xbox One, or the One S, uh, which are basically unplayable. You'll Those ones dip to like the 20s very constantly. But here, I'd say we were doing pretty well. Like, 39 FPS is definitely playable. Now, I will say though, that the frame time latency was a little bit high for my liking. It, just a little bit, but... It was still very playable and I didn't have many problems with it. Now let's move on to medium settings because I got curious and I don't know why I just decided hey let's try medium settings and we got an average of 25 frames per second, a 1% low of 22 and a 0.1% low of 19 frames per second. So this is kind of like the last gen console experience really, albeit with higher settings. The last gen consoles are kind of like with low but like extra low settings and way worse frame rates. Like 25, if anything, this might even be better than last gen console experience. But yeah, and also I was driving most of the time in this benchmark 
because it's pretty much the most demanding thing in this game apart from well actually yeah it seems to be the most demanding thing in this game especially in the city in the busier parts of the city so yeah the next game we had up was grand theft auto 5 i played it at high settings with msaa at 4 x4 or by 4 and the average frame rate i got was 42 frames per second a 1% low of 39 and a 0.1% low of 34. Now, I played this game on my GTX 1070 and I play it every now and then. And I play at 60 FPS with the V-Sync on. And to be honest, I really didn't even tell the difference. Even though it was at 40 FPS, basically the average, I genuinely couldn't really tell the difference. Uh, okay, of course I could tell the difference between the frame rates, but it's like once you start getting into the game, you really forget that you're at 40 FPS. And honestly, 40 FPS isn't bad at all. I mean, it goes above 42 FPS quite often, quite frequently, so that's probably the reason. But still, it, it was it was way fine for me. Uh, the next game we have is BeamNG Drive. Uh, I played this at max settings with the V-Sync on. Uh, I played I played it this way because it's not the most demanding game, and I was thinking that 60 FPS is probably achievable with the GTX 970, and I was correct. Uh, we got an average of 60 FPS, a 1% low of 58, and a 0.1% low of 54. This was very playable. I played this game quite frequently and uh, at these settings I play on my GTX 1070 and honestly I didn't expect these results with the uh, 970 I didn't expect the 60 FPS average but I mean I kind of did but at the same time I had my doubts so yeah uh, very playable the last game we tested was Minecraft Java edition so not the Windows 10 edition the Java edition and I played it with the SUS PTGI ray tracing shaders and uh, ray tracing texture pack I found online the render distance was at seven chunks and I was playing with normal settings but out of curiosity I also tried it on fancy settings and it, I got the same frame averages so the average was 20 frames per second the 1% low was 18 and the 0.1% low was 15. Now, keep in mind, this is a very demanding texture pack and shader pack. Like even the 1070 struggles to get 30 FPS. So I wasn't surprised with these frame rates. However, since Minecraft is a slow paced game, if you want to, well, it's slow paced when you play in creative. So I was going to say, if you want to play in creative, you're fine. But if you're going to be playing survival, I don't know, this might be a bit more uh, iffy, you know. But honestly, overall, I'm actually pretty satisfied with these results. And yeah, I think they were pretty good. So to conclude, I'd say if you want to get a budget card, the best budget card right now in around the 100 euro dollar or pound range would probably be the RX 470. But however, or the 480 because of the VRAM, that's the only reason. But if you cannot find one of those for the right price or you literally can't find one at all, this is the perfect alternative. You won't see a huge difference in performance. The RX 470 will pull ahead just slightly, but the 970 is still very capable in 2020, late 2020. And early 2021 i think it'll be fine for a couple of years to come and yeah it's not a bad card whatsoever right now so if you can find one for the right price i definitely recommend you go get it as long as you cannot find an rx 470 or 480 for the right price or 570 or 580 so yeah uh, i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something today and i hope to see you next time in the tech shack peace